Hello and welcome to the sixth section of our course, Reusing Redux Code. In this section, we'll learn how to get the most out of our reducers and actions by safely reusing them to manage multiple resource types. To demonstrate this technique, we'll write some code to display paginated data tables in Redux and reuse it for our lists of customers and invoices. We'll begin by retrieving customer data and displaying it in a data table. Then we'll add pagination to it, and in the end, we'll see how to reuse it for other resources. Today's video is called Redux Data Tables. In the last section, we focused on creating and validating new records. Today, we'll see how to read that data from the server and display it in our app. We'll start by exposing an API endpoint to retrieve a single page of customer data. Then we'll write the Redux code needed to retrieve and store the list of customers. Finally, we'll write a simple React component to display the records in a table. Our first task is to create an API endpoint to retrieve customer data. We'll use pagination so that clients can only retrieve one page at a time. This is crucial if we expect our API to be performant as the database grows. To request a page of data, I need two pieces of information, the page number and the number of records per page, or page size. We'll allow these to be specified as URL parameters, so I'll need to run more middleware for parsing query strings. We also need to add some code to enable pagination for Bookshelf because it's not turned on by default. Now we're ready to write the new endpoint. This will be a git request to forward slash customers. With the middleware that we added, the request object will now have a query property, which is where we'll look for our pagination parameters. We'll also supply some default values in case those params aren't present. The customers I want to return are those that belong to the current user. We'll order the list by email address and then use the fetch page function, which is enabled as a result of adding the bookshelf pagination plugin. We supply the page and the page size, and then we'll write the result to the JSON response. The total count tells me how many records there would be without the pagination, and the results contain the page of customers. That's all the server code that we need, so let's move over to the client. First, we'll add the endpoint to our API adapter. For now, we'll just have the server use the default page size of 15, so our list function will just take the page number and add it as a parameter on a GET request to forward slash customers. Now let's make our action creators. First, we'll create an action type to indicate that our results have been retrieved. Now I'll create an action called list, which takes a page number with a default of 1. This is an async action that calls our customer's list endpoint, and when the results are retrieved, we'll pass them to a synchronous action called results updated. The results updated action will dispatch our results updated action type and provide the result and total count from the response. Next up is the reducer code. So we'll import the reduce function in our action types and declare an initial state with an empty result set. Then we declare an update results function where we expect the action to contain the results and the total count. Then the state gets updated with those new values. We export the result of calling our reduce function with the initial state and a handler's object that maps the results updated action to our update results function.
Now, of course, we need to add this reducer to our combined reducers statement. Now it's time to write our data table component. Our table is going to fetch the results, so we'll import our action creators and use React Redux to connect them. We'll use a component class so that we have access to lifecycle methods. Then we'll use the connect function to inject the stuff that the component needs. By injecting state.customers, my component is getting the results and total count from the store. Then I can use map dispatch to props to inject my list action as the fetch property that my table will use to retrieve the customers. Then the fetch function is called when the component mounts. For my render function then, we'll just have a simple HTML table with a column for the email address. In the body, we'll loop over the results and render a table row for each one. Now we're almost done. The last step is to display this table on our customer's list page. I'll just import the table, and then I'm going to rework my display into a pure grid and add the table underneath the stuff that we've already got. Let's also make a quick styling change to add some space above our columns. Now let's go see how it looks. The styling's a bit off because we forgot to add a class to our table. And now we see the table styled correctly, populated with customer data. That's all the time that we have for this lesson. Today we learned how to paginate bookshelf database queries, retrieve and store the results with Redux, and display them with React in the form of a data table.